Yeah, that's me. You may be wondering how I got here. Receiving a flying pile driver from three miles up into an active volcano from my nemesis. Well, I'd like to think it all started back in high school. <clears throat> Oof! Transformers is a franchise that gets a bad rep because while every other ridiculous but fun idea from the previous century started getting a better mainstream adaptation, Transformers lagged behind with the same 2000s directorial style where it was simultaneously embarrassed by the source material and trying to make it more embarrassing to improve it. And while eventually the movies got a fresh new lease on life, I feel as if a lot of people hear Transformers and roll their eyes that anyone could like a shameless toy commercial, but I'm here today to tell you that it ain't like that, man. You just gotta give it a chance. I have some great memories of this franchise, and after revisiting a bit of it as I got older, I can definitely say some of it doesn't hold up. Stop. But plenty of it does! One of my favorite examples being this wonderful little game on PS2 where Megatron can kick your lifeless ragdoll body into an active volcano and his voice is so buttery smooth you swoon and ask for another. I would have waited an eternity for this. I like this shameless toy commercial. And speaking of... It's been quite a while since we've seen a game with Transformers on modern consoles, but this video's incredibly generous sponsor wants to let us know that we're one step closer with the new update for the game, World of Warships Legends, now featuring 100% more Prime. World of Warships is a free-to-play, free-to-win MMO action game about World War I and World War II inspired naval battles, and you can download it free today on your console of choice. Its UI and controls are specially adapted to feel comfortable to play on consoles, and I was able to get the hang of the smooth controls pretty much instantly when I tried it out myself. This game's also very colorful and graphically polished, with great sound design to give you a sense of where the battle's at. And having two playable Autobots and Decepticons each makes this one worth checking out for any Transformers fans hungry for new gaming content with these characters. You can check out four new Transformers themed ship skins for Optimus, Bumblebee, Megatron, and Rumble with special animations and unique voice lines for their commanders. You can also get bundles of content that appeal most to you, with unique commanders, permanent camouflages, containers, and more. Each bundle comes with a special challenge from each of the game's new factions, the Autobots and Decepticons. And the rewards for those challenges are special patches. If you want to try out the game and get a head start on progression, check out the link in the description to get 75,000 credits, a premium tier 2 ship, and 3 days of a premium account when you sign up for the game. Now back to some older Autobots and warships. Yes, I'm working on a review of the Avengers game, but it turns out I had quite a lot to say about that one, it's going to take a bit longer than expected, so you better watch it when it comes out or you're all uninvited to my birthday party. But in the meantime, I wanted to spotlight a game that's very near and dear to my heart. Transformers on PS2. Which should have a subtitle because it's based on Transformers Armada, but I, I guess not. That's never not confusing. Transformers Armada, also known as Super Robot Lifeform Transformers Legend of the Microns, was the anime that introduced and subsequently wouldn't shut up about the Minicons. The Minicons will not be used as tools of war. I'll do with them what I please, and you can't stop me. The Minicons to gain power. The Minicons. The Minicons are the pawns in our battle. The Minicons have been revived here on Earth. Get that Minicon! The Minicon! Minicons are the wave of the future, you know Transformers? Well, here's those, but smaller. Minicons can attach to your lower extremities and make you more attractive to Optimus Prime Senpai. If you collect enough Minicons, they'll become Optimus Primal for your finely tuned robotic figure. The Minicon signal originated from this position. Search the area. The game follows suit by having the plot and main gameplay mechanics tied to the use of these smaller Transformers that can attach to bigger Transformers and be used to boost their power. That sounds like the most toyetic shit ever. You gotta love it. This is also the anime that got a bunch of Canadian voice actors for the dub, including Ed Ed Nettie. You rotten liar! You broke your promise! Without my friend right now! Or not! Radar's picked up some unidentified bogeys coming at us. Oh man, you guys are wicked cool, especially the way you can transform like that! And Beast Wars Optimus and Megatron. The game has none of these human characters, so none of that was relevant, but hey, I'm a sucker for Transformers material with the absolute minimum of annoying teenage sidekicks. And as such, Beast Wars is my favorite Transformers series by a long shot. I don't know if this may be sacrilege to the Transformers fandom, but I think Gary Chalk and David K are great as these characters, and I always enjoy hearing their Optimus and Megatron, even if they aren't the classic lineup of The Predator and Scooby-Doo. 
Did you know Optimus Primal was in the Sonic movie? He was also in this video! Ooh, missed it by that much! I wish I could turn into a red and blue submarine. The game starts with a good old flashback to the war on Cybertron, as most Transformers media does. The fan favorite hippie robot underdogs battle their authoritarian space racist counterparts in a flashy battle of lasers and punching. The battle is interrupted by a distress signal from those rascally minicons who crash landed on Earth. This causes both leaders to rush to the strange new world in search of free labor from smaller robots. They helped build our cities and our industries on Cybertron. They were built and designed to be workers. They are nothing but slaves. Hey, so if Minicons are the same size as people, does that mean Frenzy was a Minicon? What about that mean girl Decepticon that Shia LaBeouf almost made sweet sugary love to? Was that a Minicon? If Decepticons could just disguise themselves as people, then why didn't they all do that? They could have just had this chick pretend to be Obama and then tell everyone that the Decepticons seemed like pretty cool guys. So anyway, we get to the game and it feels like this is the first 3D game to really nail down how a Transformer should feel. You get a great sense of the weight and scale of these characters from your tank-like movements and heavy jumping with the L1 button. I could see these controls turning some people off to the game, but I think they do a really great job of conveying the way it would feel to move as a giant robot. You don't have that weightless ninja agility that they all seem to have in the movies. The shooting is some pretty standard run and gun, but you get this first person mode to zoom in close. The fact that this mode limits your walk speed by making you crouch means it's more meant just in case you're trying to snipe some bad robots at a distance, and the game can't really be played this way all the time. Your movement speed and melee attacks change depending on which of the three Autobots you pick. You have your choice of Hopeful Chief, not Bumblebee, but basically Bumblebee, and Robocop. Alright, I'll trust you. But only if you will perform oral sex on me. This is my serious face. As for our vehicle movement, you can transmorphify into a vehicle corresponding to your alien Chevy sponsor. This vehicle stuff is kind of utilitarian and wouldn't affect the game much to remove it. There aren't as many sections where you get a lot of wide open space or flat terrain to drive on, so it's better to hoof it. Though sometimes it serves its purpose to help you cover ground more quickly if you're being chased by a boss or feeling overwhelmed by enemies because the Decepticon soldiers can't transform at all, save for the named bosses. The shooting mechanics are interesting because all of the back buttons on the controller are associated with a different power. You have your main weapon, a secondary, a power buff, or a status effect, and something else tied to traversal. Every minicon you pick up gives you a different flavor of one of these four traits, it's really fun to mix and match different builds for different missions. It's a simple system, but it gives you a lot of customization options without being overly complicated. This game has the best ragdoll of any game ever. Look at these Transformers limply rolling around like their bones have been shattered. I've never been so happy to be made of metal. I think what makes this game so memorable for me is the levels and variety of locations. You have a lot of secluded set pieces where Transformers are allowed to fight each other without human involvement. And these locations are really pretty despite their blocky PS2 graphics. Here's locations like the Amazon Rainforest, Antarctica, a tropical island, and the Alaskan Mountains, as well as locations more tied to the robots themselves like a Decepticon aircraft carrier, a flying battleship, and eventually the skies of Cybertron. Some of my favorite levels are the fight on top of the pyramid and the Decepticon cruiser. You have to go through this level twice, once while it's in operational order, and another time when you've crashed it straight into the ground. The level is really cleverly designed so you can still navigate around this place while it's now in a vertical position. The bosses aren't exactly plentiful, but they give them the coolest intro cutscenes to really hype up the fight you're about to deal with. They have a hilarious habit of doing wrestling moves on you if you get too close. I love this level where you infiltrate a Decepticon aircraft carrier, battle through hordes of enemies, and then notice something in this window. Hey, wait a minute, that, that kind of looks like a face. Then after you've proceeded far enough, you find out the aircraft carrier itself is also a Decepticon. I've said it before, but I love boss encounters where you're a small character fighting a giant. I'd like to formally extend a truce, as I think you'd be perfect for my basketball team tidal wave. Well, I just thought it'd be polite to ask. Well, most often these types of boss fights are handled with a boring QTE. <coughs> a lot of them are like a one of these. You know the boss fights that are a one of this? 
There are a lot of these. Top 10 boss fights that are uh, this. Number 10, this one. Number 9, this one. Number 8, this one. But not here, you and Tidal Wave both have a full range of movement around this massive area. You'll find yourself messing your robotic drawers as he lumbers towards you. You also get to fight Starscream twice, and Megatron is one of the coolest boss fights in history. He can do this! That move is so cool I ain't even mad. The final boss is a giant orange Orson Welles ball that launches a devastating gender reveal party on Cybertron that you stop with all your combined powers. Remember that time Unicron was the center of the Earth and if he transformed it would kill everyone and then the movies were gonna do that too but then it got cancelled? My favorite genre of film is post credit scene teasing a sequel that never happened. Rose, to top it off, this game's action is really enhanced by just how awesome this soundtrack is. This game's not exactly super complicated, but it's insanely nostalgic and memorable for me, and I had a lot of fun watching my dad play it when I was a kid. It was one of the things that got me interested in Transformers and video games in general, so it was an interesting one to revisit. If you can hunt down a copy, I definitely recommend trying it out. For victory, victory, victory. For Cybertron, Cybertron. Take it away, Optimus! Hey there, Autobots, this is Optimus Prime, and I've synthesized my human English voice to match the incredibly talented actor Gary Chalk. Subscribe to Xavier for more videos like this one. God, that is so cool, I can't believe that happened.